At Vinton County National Bank, we believe in supporting the areas where we live and work. Now, we'd like to honor those who also serve our communities. Our new Community Champions account is especially for first responders, veterans, active military, and anyone employed in the fields of healthcare or education. This account offers rewards, discounts, and other benefits to those who give so much to others. Vinton County National Bank, rewarding those who serve. Would you like to work closer to home, save money on gas, and be rewarded for your hard work and attendance? Then Belicio Foods is looking for you. That's right, Belicio Foods is now hiring for multiple positions and shifts with great employee benefits, an on site health clinic, competitive wages, and advancement opportunities. Belicio Foods is a company that truly values their employees. Apply online at Beliciofoods.com slash careers. Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday, TGIF and all that stuff. Um, we've made it to the weekend, and we have two very handsome young men here as guests on the program today. Thank you. You must be wanting a pay raise or something. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. Talk like that for us. Yeah. What? You're not a handsome young men? Oh yes. Yeah, we'll take that. That's a compliment. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's I think you are anyway. So well, no, we are going to talk about all things pig iron day today. We're gonna to talk about the um Appalachian Old Car Club and the Wheels of Steel car show. And we're gonna talk about a little fire prevention stuff while you're here. You don't know that part yet. No, I hadn't heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was buttering you up earlier. <laughs> yeah. But no, welcome. Welcome to the program. Um, could you guys introduce yourselves just in case our our viewers don't know who you are? Well, I'm David Channel, Jackson Fire Chief, uh, kind of the chairperson of Pig Iron Day. Uh-huh. John Smith, president of the Appalachia Old Car Club. There you go. And so you're thinking, what, is, what does one have to do with the other? Well, y'all... We work together. Work together and have a beautiful event every year called Pig Iron Day. Right. And could Dave, could you kind of talk about how Pig Iron Day got started? Um, sadly, I'm going to say that I think I was there for the first one. Okay. <laughs> a few years ago. Yeah. It got started in 1994 was the first year. So this being 2023, this is the 30th year. So um, from what I understand in the first 10 years, because we helped about the eighth, ninth year of it, Tom Evans, Ron Speakman, Robin uh, um, Pucker, Pucker yeah. and Ed Henderson got this started mm -hmm. in, uh, because Jackson was known for all kind of furnaces throughout the county. Mm -hmm. And that's how they got this pig iron started. And it just kept growing and growing. And then we took over in the 10th year, uh, Jackson Firefighters Association. Yes. And we've kept it going. And like I said, this is the 30th year. So this is really, uh, I know I just talking to Tom Evans this week, and I think we really surprised him by keeping this going for 30 sure. years. So No, it's a wonderful event. It, I feel like it just gets bigger every year. Um and it, it truly was an event to to commemorate, um, you know, the the pig iron furnaces here in our area. And there were at one point, I can't remember the number, but quite Several. a Several. quite a few. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's just one of those things that we want to celebrate our heritage and not let it get forgotten. Right. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. So. Thus, Pig Iron Day is um, uh, always, what, the first um, Saturday in August. That's correct. Yeah. And so tell us a little bit about what's going to happen from the firefighter standpoint, and then we'll get to the, the car show because it is huge. Yes. Okay. From our standpoint, of course, we um, do all the food and have the entertainment. Um, the food-wise will be um, pork sandwiches. Uh, you put your own barbecue sauce on. Depends on how much you want. Okay, question. Okay. Put you all on the spot. Everybody in here, 
If you get pulled pork sandwiches, do you or do you not put barbecue sauce on it? I do. I do. James? Yes. Dylan? Yeah, I do. No. (laughs) No, no, no. (laughs) You enjoy the pork. Yes. It put, takes me back to mom having the shake shop and they had the pork barbecue there and I always just put slaw on it. I never put barbecue yes. sauce on it. Yep. It was delicious. That's so that's sure. what I do. I do it at home too. Right. <laughs> so anyway, don't do barbecue. Well, well, you come down tomorrow and you can get you a sandwich. I can give me a plain then. sandwich. <laughs> yeah. We have 556 pounds of pork to cook tonight. Holy moly. <laughs> How do you guys do that? Well, we got big roasters. Okay. Um, we got four of them. Okay. So, uh, do you do that out at the park? Yeah. yeah we How will fun. cook it at the park uh, starting at about probably three o'clock in the morning. Well, how do you do that? There's not oxygen in the air at 3 in the morning. Yeah, that's true. Well, <laughs> we got we got the roasters and they're already seasoned and wrapped and uh, ready to go, huh? Right. They're ready to be put on and serve. <laughs> that is so exciting. Okay, and then I heard something about beans too. Yeah, we, we have beans and cornbread, 120 pound of beans. So we got plenty. And you're going to cook that out there too. Yes. We have two pots we cook them in open fire. Why does that make it taste so much better? I can't answer that one. Just it's, people says it does. Well, the the pot itself, you know, is cast iron. Yes. So I think that has a lot to do with it. I think it. that that flavor just kind of comes through. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then we have brats, whether you want mustard, ketchup on it, peppers, onions, whatever you want oh, on it. Oh, you have all that too? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, we cook peppers and onions together just like they do at festivals. Yeah. And then we have hot dogs. Uh, you get sauce on it or plain, of course. And then uh, free pop and water. And then uh, Kona Ice will be there. And also Kettle Craze Corn will also be there. Yes. So that's pretty much all the food stuff. Um, we will have our drive through tomorrow at the school bus lot. We started that back when COVID uh, was here. That is such a good um, addition. Yes, it was. The There's a lot of people come through there. Because we have a team over there in the bus lot. Uh, We'll get it, bring it right back to your vehicle, and you just pull back out. Uh, Look for the orange cones on Huron Street by the bus garage and come in there. And you don't have to call ahead then? You can just pull in? You can just pull in. Okay. Or if they want to call ahead and have it, we'll have it ready for them. Or uh, if it's right here in town and I have somebody to deliver it, we'll deliver Okay. Uh, I can call my cell phone at 418-8086. Okay. And I'll take the order and give it to the people who prepares it, and it'll be ready for them. Very good. Well, you don't really have an excuse to not, not to enjoy some uh, pork and beans tomorrow, right? right. That's right. <laughs> that is awesome. And, um, of course, we have the plaque auction at 1 o'clock. This year, uh, being the 30th anniversary, I worked with OSCO. And instead of having the raised letters on them, they look like they've been engraved on it, routed out. Oh, so cool. So they're a different design. And they got 30-year anniversary on those with the years 1994 to uh, 2023. Very So cool. there's going to be uh, six of those. Three of them will be, have JISCO on them, and three of them's got uh, Globe Iron on them. Oh, so cool. That, so that's different. Yeah. So that's basically what's going on and then uh of course tommy hill will be playing music out of the gazebo all day spinning the tunes saw tommy last night on the downtown streets of jackson and uh spinning some tunes down there as well it's what he does yeah he's amongst good. a whole he, lot of other stuff but <laughs> yeah, yeah he's good at playing his music and yep. uh, he's been there about every year for us and then we'll have an inflatable multi uh multi uh inflatable for the kids to play on fun and then the other thing that's really important is the jackson kiwanis club and the liberty township firefighters help us and we make a donation to them because we can't handle this ourselves this just got so big yeah so uh, that's good because you know they're giving back to the community just like his wheels the steel car shoe people does so. That's exactly right but how many people do you typically have come through do you do you guys count no, it's I a would, ton. I would say there's probably 500 people at least or more come through the food line. Yeah. Because 
on a good day and tomorrow the weather is supposed to be great. It it's is. supposed to be a little warm, but I'll take that over the rain. Yes. Um, once the food line opens up at 11 o'clock, it usually don't pretty much end till the end. And we quit serving at 3 o'clock. So okay. So if you're hungry or tomorrow. Or you run out. Yeah. Which could happen, too. <laughs> uh, if you're hungry tomorrow, come on out. Visit the car show people and uh, um, come get yourself something to eat and sit around, talk to people. And uh, it's a good afternoon. It's really a nice it thing is. that uh, former Mayor Tom Evans started and that cruise. And we've kept it going. Yeah. And, and thank you for that, because it's just a, a wonderful community day for everybody. Now, I'm going to put you on the spot here. From what I remember, you all sell your food pretty cheap. Uh, yes, the uh, hot dogs are fifty cents. A brat's two dollars. Um, beans and cornbread. I I don't. I think it's a dollar on that one. And then the pork sandwiches are three dollars. And then free pop and free water. You guys, so. that's that's wonderful. And so you can bring the whole family, come down, get some delicious food uh, for a very very reasonable price, and. Right. Uh, so it's win-win for everybody. Right. Plus, you're supporting great things. Yeah, we we use uh, um, any proceeds we get off of this. We use to buy equipment and yeah. then donate it back to the city, and then becomes their property. So you know, you're helping us, and you're helping the community. You're helping yourself because you never know when you might need us for something. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, cool. So let's move over to the car show yes, for a minute Anna. because it's so cool that you almost have two different things going on exactly the same place and, and two different organizations running all of this in conjunction. Um, I think that's so fun. So tell us a little bit about the Wheels of Steel car show. Okay. Um, this is our 26th year of Wheels of Steel car show there with in conjunction with the uh, firefighters. And it's presented by the Appalachia Old Car Club. We are celebrating 49 years, our car club. That's so good. And we have one member that was the original, and he lives in Galpolis, and he's 93 years old. And I talked to him at the 4th of July parade, and he still drives his Model A. He drove it up from Galpolis. Are you kidding? Yes. That is great. His name is Don Mink, and um, he's he's really a neat fellow to talk to. I talked I'll to bet. him probably at least a half hour uh, in the lineup for the 4th of July parade. So anyway, um, we also want to thank the Jackson County Tourism uh, Bureau for uh, assisting us also. Sure. And I know they assist Dave on uh, his part mm -hmm. on the um, firefighters. And um, then the registration starts at 9 and runs till 12. And I hate to say there's just no late registration. So really, really try to get there on time. Before noon. I'm going to, while I'm talking about time and, and location, um, for folks that's coming from out of town, mm -hmm. the park doesn't actually have an address so if you would use... <laughs> we should do something about that. Yeah. So if you would use Kroger's address, yes. which is across the street, 530 East Main. Okay. So if you're Googling it or whatever. Or, um, Putting you, it in your MapQuest or whatever. MapQuest yeah. or whatever. Just use the 530 East Main Street, Jackson, and it'll bring you right to us. Okay. So I wanted to throw that out because I've been asked that question in the past. Okay, we're going to have classes. The Class A uh, will have uh, 60 trophies there, and it's cars up through 1999. Class B is from 2000 to current. And then we're going to have our veterans class. We'll have uh, 15 trophies there, so our veterans can sign up um, for that. And uh, there's no changing after you sign up for a class. Don't come back and say, oh, yeah, I've changed my mind. So be sure of the class that you want to get in okay. at the time of registration. The other thing is, is we're going to have the favorite Ford product sponsored by Mark Porter. Makes sense. And the favorite <laughs> Chrysler product yeah. also by Mark Porter. Makes we, sense. We would really... 
thank them for all the things they do for us. Yeah. And then uh, down in South Webster, Hain Chevrolet helps us out with the um, favorite GM. Okay. And then um, our club gets together and we do a car club favorite. So our members go out, look at all the cars, and then they pick a car that they figure is the car club favorite and we'll have a trophy for them also. Awesome. So we're going to give out around 80 trophies total. So anyway, it's going to make it quite interesting to, to judge all these cars. I got three judges. They'll go out and judge these cars. Uh, just some things that you want to uh, remember that you need a fire extinguisher in your car to be judged. And, um, we're going to also uh, have the dash plaques that we, when you register, the little dash plaques that uh, will have uh, this year's date on it and everything. Okay. We do a 50-50 split the pot. Oh, okay. So we, we have fun with that. And uh, then also the car club gives out a new $100 bill that you can uh, will draw for that also so Ooh. there's a lot of things going on and uh, stop by if you just want to look at the cars and get familiar with the cars and some of the people that drive them and what have you they're they're always very glad to explain their car oh yeah uh, where it come from maybe the history about it things like that uh, I've got a car that's been in my family for, for since 1940 that I restored in 1940 Olds. Yes. So I'm kind of proud of that, that um, I've been able to hang on to that car for that period of it, time. Didn't you say that was your grandparents? or My grandmother's. Um, that is so uh, yes. cool. What they, a good story. They bought it in 1940 in Ironton, Ohio. And that's about all I know. I don't know exactly what the cost was, but I'm sure back then it was a lot of money. I you would know, say. Yeah, it's a four-door car. It's an uh, Oldsmobile. But anyway, uh, the other thing we'd like to do is uh, let you know that we do contribute back to the community. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth's Hope, Oaks United down in Oak Hill, and they do a lot of good work. My Brother's Place up in Wellston, mm -hmm. Jackson County Heart Support Group, which I think they're going to have an event here next month, I believe. Okay. And uh, Jackson County Senior Citizens. Ohio Historical, uh, Jackson County Homeless, we c contribute to them. Buckeye Hero Hunt. Now, that is a very special thing. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, you know, they assist the veterans that's been injured or mm -hmm. what have you to go out and do uh, a hunt or mm -hmm. an event. And uh, we want to support them. And, of course, then back we uh, support David with these Jackson County Firefighters Association. So... Um, we do a lot of things around the community. Um, this fall, I want to mention, uh, October 21st, that's a Saturday, we will be at the Trinity Chapel Church. That is at 14545 State Route 93. It's right beside the West Banco Administrative Building. Yep. And we were there in June 10th, and I had over 60 cars in just a cruise in. Yes. And you were shocked. I yes, remember. You I was shocked. Like, what? I, this I is great. The, I asked the church and the car club, I said, I have an idea. We need to get out and we need to be more visible in the community, our car club. And they said, sure. And I was very shocked and surprised How that fun. I had over 60 cars there. So, um, <coughs> you know, we're going to do food again and door prizes and what have you. We just, we just want to get people out and let them see some of these vehicles that's kind of stored away in some of these garages and yeah. places around Jackson. And, and of course, they were all from Jackson. There was people from Waverly. There was people from Athens or Memphis, you know, all around uh, that come to the cruise in. And then we're um, always uh, looking for new members. Yeah. And, I mean, you don't have to have a car to be a member. Right. You know, you can be involved and and. Yeah, assist us in, yeah. in some of these projects that we do. And from time to time, we do what we call cruises. We'll like uh, go up to Lake Hope, we'll get in our old cars, and we'll maybe have lunch and yeah. what have you, and drive around. Uh, you know, so, you know, we want to be out and be seen and uh, just have fun. 
That's the whole point, isn't it? Yes. Don't we all just want to have some fun? Yes. Get in your cars and have fun and, yeah. and um, what have you. Very good. And I know it's tomorrow, but if anybody has any questions or want to call me at 740-418-5880 this afternoon or in the morning to ask questions or directions or what have you, you're welcome to do that. That's right. And um, you just call John. Right. <laughs> Just, just John. <laughs> no, very good. This is going to be an amazing event. It is every year. Um, um, and it's just one of those like great community fun days. Yes. Just bring the kids, bring the whole family, right. walk around, look at the cars. It's not costing you anything. That's correct. Grab a, a bite to eat, which barely costs you anything. Right. And um, But you're helping along the way, too, which yes. is great. Helping yes. a lot of groups. Yeah, helping a lot yes. of groups. Yes, that's true. The other thing uh, I forgot to mention about the auction is I have another barrel this year from Speyside. Okay. And they actually this year um, burned uh, – Writing on it, uh -huh. specifying the 30-year anniversary. How and then fun. I also have a lid by itself to auction it off, too, with the same design on it. So that that's uh, a good thing there. Brett Reed, we were just talking over on my show. Brett Reed has every barrel that we've sold. So Matt was seeing, wonder how much we'll get this year. Ooh, so, somebody coming out yeah. and so start bidding against Brett out, and see what out. happens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's kind of, you know, throw that out there to see if who can go against Brett this year. Oh. Get the 30th year anniversary. It's a challenge. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> the pressure's on. <laughs> yeah. No, very good. And um, no, it's just a wonderful day. We invite everybody to come out to Jackson and just hang out and have a good time tomorrow. And um, it, it's just fun. It's yeah. fun. So, okay, so not to to take away from what you guys are talking about, but you all both kind of, well, you're the fire chief, but you also have a business that kind of relates with fire, and that is you have a fire extinguisher yes. business. Yes. And you were talking about each car has to have a fire extinguisher that's in right, it. That's to and, be judged. And, and why, I assume that's just obviously because you never know. A, a, Safety a, factor. Yeah, a car could catch fire at any moment, just that's like right. anything else. But, um, Dave, uh, we were talking off the air, our... Because I know sometimes throughout the year, there's kind of some rules about when you can burn and when you can't. And, you know, sometimes it's at night and, and whatever. So could you kind of maybe just go over some of those rules and the, and if you know um, what they are and just to let people know how to be safe? Because, you know, a lot of people have fires this time of the year for fun, but then the leaves start falling off the trees and stuff and then it gets pretty dangerous quick. Right, yeah. We'll be in brush fire season for long, the fall one. I noticed some of the leaves are falling off my trees in my house already. Couldn't believe it's it. It's hot and dry. It's hot, yeah, it's hot and dry, hot and which dry. is, of course, you know, not good for fire prevention. Right. Well, brush fire season is March, April, and May, and October, November. You cannot burn okay. from 6 in the morning till 6 in the evening. Uh, and then inside oh, some, nice. some okay. areas of the county... Like Jackson, you are not allowed to burn. Period. It don't matter what it is. Like in the city of Jackson, right? You, okay. The only way you can do that is if you're preparing food over it, or a bonfire ceremonial, or using it for heat, like at a construction site. Then you can get by with you know that kind of stuff. But you still uh, need to be real careful and safe. Oh yeah, you got to be careful with it. Sparks don't blow around or blow under your deck or something and sure. cause a fire. And then, of course, out in the county, um, they we go by that burn ban. And then they anywhere in the county, you're not allowed to burn like tires, shingles, vinyl siding, stuff like that, no matter what. That's an EPA issue, That's EPA, isn't it? EPA, yes, it is. You don't want the EPA knocking on your door, I promise you. No. You do not. No, you don't want them showing up at your door. No. So, and again, then the other rules is... No burning from 6 to 6. Uh, and if you do burn after 6 o'clock in the evening, we like for you to call into the sheriff's office. Tell them you are going to be doing a controlled burn. So they just, somebody going by, don't see it.
call it in, and they send the fire departments. Uh, <laughs> that happened to my neighbor. <laughs> the whole world came in to yeah. their house, so they were having a weenie roast. And thing. then when yeah. you do get done, call back and say, I'm finished. So if there is a fire, then the dispatcher don't ignore it. Yeah. And don't think that you're, like, um, annoying somebody or bothering them by doing this. They would rather know right than, than have to. Yeah, yes. for sure. Yeah, you know, it's... Uh, it just makes sense to do all of that to uh, runs our run numbers up and everything like that. And of course, nothing's cheap nowadays. Fuel no, it is and not. everything. So, you know, it just it helps your fire department. So. Yeah, absolutely. And um, John, let's talk about people. Obviously, businesses are required to have fire extinguishers. Which right. thank you for taking care of all that. He's <laughs> he's a savior because he just comes and shows up and does all the stuff and we don't even know he's been there. But biz so businesses have to have the exit signs and, and all of the proper right. you know stuff. But let's talk about homes. Like I'll bet you there's a lot of you listening today that never thought to put a fire extinguisher in your own home. Right. You know you could have a kitchen fire, you could be uh you know, gassing up your lawnmower or anything like that and something happened. Um, you know, it's just a situation that it just happens so quick. Um, yeah. You need to have that ready. And then a lot of times you'll set your fire extinguisher back somewhere and something will get set in front of it. So <laughs> put your fire extinguisher up where it can be seen, um, mounted. Yeah, and, like don't be like, where did I put it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you know, while we're talking about this, you know, your your smoke detectors are so so important. Your carbon monoxide detectors yes. are so important. David gets um, calls every once in a while. I know uh, one goes off, uh, especially the carbon monoxide detectors. Yes. They go out with their meet their meters and check it to see yeah. if it's faulty or if there is a uh, exposure to carbon Listen, monoxide. Listen, if you're carbon monoxide, number one, if you don't have, if you have gas in your house, and you don't have one, you're insane. But number two, if that sucker goes off, you better call somebody. Yeah. Because you, you because can, it, it can be deadly it's the quickly. It's killer. Yes. Because, you know, it's, it can't be smelled or seen or anything. Yeah. And, uh, it can, uh, take you over pretty quick and, and you'd pass out. And That's it. But anyway. But no, the uh, the fire extinguisher side, I've been doing this about 43 years. I kind of really enjoy getting out, seeing the peep, my customers, and, and thank my customers for the support all over these years. But um, businesses, it's required. Insurance, OSHA, different things like that require it. And also the um, emergency lighting. Uh, you never know when you're in a building and the power fails, uh, then the emergency lighting comes on and you can see your way out. Sure. And this is another safety factor. David works with, with uh, businesses on that, I know, and what have you, and and uh, helps them uh, understand why they need it and, and where to place them and things of this order. Everything that we try to enforce is all about one word, safety. Yes, it's number one. Sure. Safety for the occupants of the building or the public that's going in and what have you. Um, we just don't want to see anything, anyone get injured or hurt. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it is very important. But don't think that, well, my house isn't a business and I don't need a fire extinguisher or, you know, whatever. You do. Right. And you need to check those batteries and do all of that stuff right. in your home. And do like an anniversary date on, on checking these. Like Good your, idea. Your birthday or Christmas or a Good holiday idea. or something. Something you won't forget. Something you won't forget because, yeah. you know, I hate to say it's like you put it up and then years go by and then the detector might not be working because the batteries weren't changed uh, or uh, just maintained. Well, nowadays you don't. You get the ones that are ten-year lithium batteries. Yeah, right. You don't have to change them. You can't even take it out and use it for something else. Right. So many yes. of the old ones used nine-volt batteries, and people would take them out and use the battery in the radio and the remote. <laughs> Listen, we've all been there and done that. Don't <laughs> say you haven't. <laughs> and then, then we get a call and go there. Would well, your smoke detector go off? No. Well, then we look, and there's no battery in it. Yeah. So nowadays, uh, the 10-year lithium battery is the way to go, yes, and that's what the state's promoting. 
if and you're they, going to buy one, go ahead and get spend a couple more bo- dollars exactly. and, and get one because it's your life, people. It, it is your it life. Is. It's your family's life. It's right. your pet's you know, life. And here's the deal. This is the great thing. They have the, the lithium battery combo now where it's, it's mm-hmm. a smoke detector and a carbon monoxide detector right. all in one little thing. You literally stick it to your ceiling and you're done for 10 years. Right. right. That's, that's it. That's how long they're good for. I mean, you're supposed to change them out every 10 years. Yep. Yeah. On the back of a, on the back of that unit is a data manufacturer. So when you know the 10 years is up, get rid of it and get you a new one. It's very, very simple. They're real right. light. They don't cost hardly anything. And I know, like, I think Callahan Hardware, but, of course, Amazon and you know, some of the, everybody has them. But they even make combo packs where there's, like, three or four of them in a pack or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, right. and um, so you just stick those up and place them in different areas around your house. Yeah. Speaking of, where should, um, where should fire um, detectors, smoke detectors be? In the home, well, in the homes, you want them near your bedrooms. Okay, uh, not in the kitchen. No, don't put it in the kitchen. Uh, I mean, that's your first thought, though, is well, that's where most fires, you know, you would think would start. But don't put it in your kitchen because any smoke that you have is going to set right. it off. Yeah, <laughs> if um, near the kitchen doorway, you yeah. know, smoke's going to go to the ceiling and it's going to get out of there pretty quick. <laughs> so, and then each level of the house should have one, whether it's the basement. Uh, you need one down there. Okay. And then your CO detector, we usually put them near a, uh, especially if you got a forced air furnace, we put it near the register. So on the, uh, uh, not the return, but one's putting up the heat. Yes. Put it near that so it's going to pick it up. when it, Once it gets into your duct work, then it's going to come out. And set it yeah, okay, and that's quick. really good advice too. Yeah, for your yeah. carbon so monoxide. So where it blow, you know, where the air right. is blowing out, you want that detected right away. Yeah, yes. because carbon monoxide is, you know, like John said, it's a deadly uh, product. You don't know it's air, and it can overtake you. Yep. So your alarm's going to go off. It's going to pre-warn you. It'll go off at about thirty parts per million is what OSHA starts to look at as dangerous, and then the more it goes, it'll just keep climbing. Okay. So there is also digital CO detectors, and that tells you how much percentage you actually have in your house. Is it normal to have any in your house? No, you should have no CO Z- in your so house. So it should say zero. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. If it says anything, you better get it checked out. There's right. battery operated ones. There's uh, ACDC ones you can plug into. Yeah, the wall. I have a plug in one in our bedroom. Yeah, just it's yeah. probably got a battery backup if you look. Yes, you yeah. definitely need one if you have a ventless heater in your house. Yes, you definitely need a CO detector then because there's no exhaust pipe to those. Correct. So you need one of those right. for sure. Yep. So. Okay, so these are all just little helpful hints that we want to remind our viewers about. Just, it seems like common sense, but I think sometimes we all just get complacent and, you know, oh, there's a smoke detector there. It's fine. Wait, I built built my house 20 years ago. Like, yeah. It's probably right. needs yeah. changed out. You know, these are all things that that we need to just wanted to remind you all about. Right. So you all, um, unfortunately we're out in my neighborhood, uh, last week when it was, you know, 7 million degrees outside. And, um, you know, these firefighters have to wear this, this turnout gear and, and all of that. And you all, I don't know how, um, thank God for some shade trees, I guess, and, yeah. and, and water, but, uh, we want to prevent any, we, you're there for a reason, but we'd love for you not to have to do your job. <laughs> That's true. That's true. You know, they were all aggravating me out there Saturday, like you said. It was extremely <laughs> it was hot, hot humidity. Of course, if you remember, we had the fire Christmas Eve morning when it was eighteen below zero. So the guy said, "Why can't you That's... balance it out and get it the weather right? <laughs> don't be so cold or don't be so hot." Cause yeah, it was rough. Yeah, it is. It was really rough on the guy. About one bottle of air through their SCBA, and they was ready to get out of their gear. It's yeah. just so hot. It's, it's, of course, it's John used hot. to be a firefighter back years ago, too, so he knows what that's like, too. Yep. I mean, you know, right? It's there's mm-hmm. no good time, really. But. No. Yeah, with all the turnout gear, you can just get overheated real, real quick. Real fast. Yeah. Yeah. You can dehydrate real quickly. Yes. And take you down. Yeah, so thank you guys for what you do because, uh, okay. and, you know, you uh, obviously are always looking for uh, – a few good men or women to join the fire departments. 
right. and that's departments all over the place. That's all Every, across everywhere. the United States, everywhere. Yes. In fact, I was just reading yesterday where a fire station, I don't remember where it was, it was here in the United States, put a sign on the front door, closed. There's just no help. Uh, you know, people's not wanting to do it. Uh, I don't know the answer. I mean, we're doing it right here in this county. Yeah. We, of course, you've probably seen all the fire trucks there. Yeah. I had four, four or five departments there, and I had 20 people. You might only get one or two, but that's one or two. Yeah. And you have to do it to have the people to have the do people. the job. And what I think what a lot of you uh, people don't realize is, you know, when the Jackson Fire Department goes out, that means somebody else has to cover the Jackson Fire Department. So it, it's like a big vicious circle of, of people having to rotate and whatever to... It's to, called mutual aid. Yes, mutual yes. aid. And um, so when you guys go out, maybe Colton or mm -hmm. somebody else, Wellston or somebody is covering your station while you all are out. So it takes a lot of folks. Well, Saturday, for instance, uh, South Webster was over to Madison Jefferson covering the area. Yes. Well, we running out of help because of the heat. So South Webster ended up coming up to the fire there Saturday yep. and helping us. And then they brought uh, Centerville over to help cover the area. So, you know, we all work together. Yeah. It's a so, big, it's a big deal. And um, we are still accepting volunteers. If you uh, are interested in joining the fire department, like I've told in here before, it's uh, it's very rewarding to be on a fire department. You you save people's property, lives, uh, you know, help get them out of wrecks and so forth. So it's very rewarding, I feel, to serve the community. If you sure. want to do it, serve your community. That's one way to do it. It's uh, you don't do it for the money. Nobody does it for the money. I don't care if you're in New York City or where. Right. Those correct. people have more hazards there than we got. And it's not worth the pay. You just got to love and want to do it. Yes. Yeah. And it's, it's for the love of, of helping people um, and animals. I mean, any kind yes. of thing that you guys get right. yourselves into. Right. There, there's a lot of uh, different scenarios besides a house on fire or a business on fire that, that you all get called out for um, and, and can help. Right. So if you're interested in joining any of the fire departments, no matter mm -hmm. where you live, just visit their station. I'm sure they'll be glad to meet you, talk about it. Um, we're hoping to get started here in with the schools. We've already met with them. We're going to be starting a cadet program through Jackson City Schools. That is awesome. I love so, that. Uh, and it's going to be for ages 15 through 17. Of course, at 18, they can join a department. Okay, I was going to ask you what the age was. It's 18. Okay. You have to can join the department and get in a, a state tested class but the cadet program there's going to be guidelines uh set up which we already have them we've met with the schools they're good with it so we're hoping to uh pick up some young teenagers that want to do that you know that's it's, super cool because nowadays from what we were told you have to have 60 hours of community service before you can graduate you do. so this is going to help them to get their uh, 60 hours mm -hmm. some of them might not stay but some of them could stay mm -hmm. and so it's going to help them and us so i'm kind of excited to get that going you got it i think that's fantastic and get get the kids involved early and and um, they can go through the training and whatnot and then hit the ground running when they turn 18 yeah they'll be able to go on the trucks with us and everything and can oh come. really yeah it's, they'll be able to come to the station and hang out with us and that's awesome. They'll get their community hours. Very, very good. So uh, if you're interested in that, um, just ask at the school and, and uh, they'll get you set up so that way. We're hoping to get that going. Uh, but like I said, schools is uh, ready to go with it. We met with uh, Superintendent Howard and uh, Mr. Swackhammer, the principal. Okay. And they were good with it. So Very cool. Talking about community service, uh -huh. I've been a Lions Club member for 29 years. Yes. And we have the Leo Club. Listen, there were a lot of Leos running around <laughs> uptown last last night, and yes. they are fantastic. Yes, and that's how they get their service hours. Those kids, I'm going to tell you, I've um, there's been times where I've had like a dog event or something at the brewery, and 
got overwhelmed and needed help, and I can call Crystal, uh, Crystal Finch, who Finch, is is their SBA. their advisor. And yes. I'll be darned if there's not ten kids in five minutes that show up at that place. And right. I mean, they are fantastic. Yes. So. So yes, um, thank you. Well, that. I, I want to thank the kids. Yeah, thank the kids. For, they are awesome. Because uh, the last count, we had over 100. Yeah. Uh, They're great. Videos. Yeah. So They've uh, helped us before in projects. Yes. Yes. They are very, so, very helpful. Crystal, you're listening. Yes. You're doing a fantastic thank job. Thank you for and, everything. And we give her a Melvin Jones Award last year for her hard work. And uh, not a lot of those are being given out, but uh, we felt that she's doing such a wonderful job with our young people, our Leos. We awarded that to her. Good, good for you. She and deserves it. Well yes, deserved. She did. And her father, Jack. Yes. Actually, I had him present it to oh, her because I love that. he is a Melvin Jones. Uh, recipient also. Oh, that's so cool. Yes. Keep it in the family. Right. Very, very cool. All right. Well, guys, let's let's recap and yes. um, go over everything that's happening tomorrow at Pig Iron Day and the Wheels of Steel Car Show. Go ahead, David. Uh, well, of course, this is the 30th year anniversary of it. Um, it'll be food, um, free pop, free water, an auction at 1 o'clock with plaques made right here at Osco Industries. Super have a cool. barrel made right here at uh, Spaceside Bourbon Cooperage to auction off with a lid, just a single lid. It's got uh, engravings, markings on it that talks about the 30-year anniversary. Uh, there will also be cone of ice there. Kettle Craze Corn will be there. Tommy Hill playing music from the gazebo. Um, drive through at the school bus lot off of Huron Street. Look for the orange cones. Um, call my cell phone number at 418-8086 to place orders. In fact, I already had people calling uh, <laughs> Wednesday night wanting to place orders. That's so awesome. So that's good. That's good. And then I had so some good. call yesterday. Um, so people's really looking forward to this. And then we can even deliver to your house or if you go to work, we'll deliver to your business. So put an order together, call us, and we'll bring it to you. Can you say that number just one more time? 418-8086. Oh, okay. Thank you. And that's Dave's number there, Dave Channel, and, yeah. and you can give him a ring. <coughs> All right, car show. Okay, car show. Registration, 9 to 12. And uh, I feel like that our, our entry fee, the $10, is real affordable. I've, uh, yeah, I I've, say it I've is. been to other car shows. It's uh, anywhere from, uh, up to $20, $25. Yep. So we try to keep that down so we can uh, have more cars. And uh, then the uh, classes is the um, through 1999 and 2000 to current. And then our veterans class. And then, of course, our spatial trophies go to uh, Ford, Chrysler, GM, and Car Club Favorite. Yes. And to split the pot, we always have fun with that. We'll <laughs> give you a door, uh, a dash plaque uh, when you uh, register. And then uh, we'll have a $100 bill that we're going to uh, draw for also uh, for the car club. And then also, I want to also thank all the sponsors that we have. I can't name them all, but just thank you. For the mm -hmm. ones that donate uh, prizes for the um, uh, drawing for the um, car club. Yeah, absolutely. And again, it's all for, it's all, you know, it's community involvement, but to go back into the community to help, right. to help everybody. Right. So as you know, I named uh, fun. Uh, eight or 10 different things that we contribute back to. Yes. And uh, it's just, it's just so uh, fun to go out and look at the different model cars and where they're from. Yes. Get the history from the owner as to where it come from or the work they did on it or uh, what have you. It, it's really interesting at times. I try to it make is. my way around and, and talk to these uh, entries and, and find out a little bit about the history of the car. And let's just be honest, um, and this is just my opinion, but you know, it used to be, even when I was in high school, um, 
you saw a car drive down the street and you knew exactly what it was. They right. were unique and whatever. And now I think they're a lot safer than they once were and more efficient than they than they were back then. Yeah. But cars aren't as unique as they, you know, looking as they used to be, most right. of them. Right. Um, so it's really fun to go out and see all of these older vehicles and like how just cool they were. Yeah, you and, know, and you so know, so unique. Yes, you know somebody has got a GTO. I do. And if I happen we could to know ever, where it is, too. and if we could ever get it out of that garage, I know. We won't mention any names, but I think you'll know who what we're talking about. Yeah. The green car, the gr- the green one, the green one. Okay, the, Davey. But I I got to drive that car. Really, I did. And he claims. That no one has ever sat in the back seat. No of one that has car. ever been in the back seat of that car. So, do you think we can do something sometime? Maybe sneak somebody in the back seat and take oh. a picture. You're asking for trouble. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Like I'm it. not going to be that person. You <laughs> can be that person <laughs> as the neighbor. <laughs> uh, okay. But no, guys, thank you so much for coming in. We invite everyone to come out and visit and enjoy Pig Iron Day tomorrow. Uh, It's going to be a fantastic day. Weather's going to be hot, but it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be just a perfect day to get out. And, you know, back to school and all the hubbub's going to start soon. Come out and just relax. Yes, have fun. Have fun. Bring the family. Chill out. And have a just a fun day in the park here at Manpower Park in Jackson. Right. That's correct. The only other thing I'd like to say is anytime you see a fire department having a fundraiser, Mm -hmm. try to support them no matter where it is because those folks are raising money to help buy equipment to serve the community. Everything is so expensive nowadays, as you know. Yes. Um, A coat and a pair of pants for a firefighter now is about $3,000. And that don't include your gloves, your boots, your helmet, a pager. All that stuff. Wow. Yeah, it's not cheap. And, uh, you know, just like the air packs that they wear on their back when they go in a, a hazardous atmosphere, yep. those are probably about $6,000 a piece. Oh, my gosh. So, you know, you're, you're supporting a fire department is helping. You're helping them, but they're also helping you. At some point, you never uh, know when you need the, them. The, you're 100% correct on that. Uh, yes. It's never going to happen to me. Don't ever say that. No. Right. Right. So fire can strike at any given time, no matter where. That's right. That's right. So I appreciate you having us in. Oh, well, we appreciate you spending your morning with us and and letting us know all the fun things going on tomorrow. Okay. All right. I might come back and visit you and maybe talk a little bit more about the October event. We can't wait. That'll be fun. All right. Well, while we're getting switched out here, our good friend Pete Wilson just walked in the door, which means he's got something to say. (laughs) And uh, Mr. Dillon, you want to pull up that weekend weather forecast for us while the guys are switching out here? All right. And um, today is looking pretty. Thank you, boys. You handsome young devils, you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Um, no, today is looking really, really hot. Um, partly cloudy skies with highs of 90 degrees. Lows, the good news is dipping down to 65 overnight, so you can uh, open up those windows, cool down your house just a hair if, if you want to. Did you shock yourself? <laughs> um, and then Saturday, uh, looking like uh, partly cloudy skies, highs of 89, lows of 64. And then Sunday, right back up into the 90s. But uh, some rain in the forecast. And then the beginning of your work week, the good news is cooler temperatures, but uh, some rain in the forecast. But we kind of need that rain as well. So we'll take it. All right. Our good friend Pete Wilson has walked in the door, which means either he's got good news or bad news. I'm not sure which. Um, We have developing news. Developing news. I guess it's all in your your point of view. Well, it's on a a story that certainly is not good news. Okay. Uh, And that is, of course, you know, the uh, episode that occurred at the MacArthur residence uh, where um, Travis Dakota Williams, age 28, as a result or, or as following an incident, I should say, at 411 South Market Street in in MacArthur, um, an alleged assault took place there. Uh, shortly after that, um, 
the MacArthur police uh, were called. This was, happened on Thursday, July 27th. He uh, was taken to Holzer Medical Center, Jackson Hospital, where he was uh, pronounced dead. Yeah. Uh, the big deal so is trying to figure out what happened sure. before he died and also what caused his death. That is the big question, and it remains the big question. Okay. But since we talked last time, yes. which was yesterday, yes. uh, the big development is that there has been an arrest in that investigation. Oh, you're kidding. And we have to say this. We have to say this uh, very precisely. Yes. Uh, James Daryl Coleman, age 40, of South Market Street in MacArthur. Uh, uh, there, there's his picture up there that Dylan's put up there. Okay. He is arrested and charged with felonious assault uh, in this investigation by the Vinton County Sheriff's Office. Okay. And yes, the incident did take place at Coleman's residence. I don't think he lives there alone, but he is one of the residents there at 411 South Market Street. Now, he is charged with felonious assault. He's not charged with anything else yet. Okay. Because... The investigation is continuing, and more because the final autopsy results from the Montgomery County Coroner's Office are not in. Yes. If the results from the, Mar from the Montgomery County Coroner's Office are received and they indicate and are interpreted by the Vinton County Sheriff's Office that um, Williams's death was caused as a result of the alleged assault that right. took place before his death, those charges obviously could uh, grow, talking, and grow and become more serious. Yeah, you know, you're talking, talking about something. Exactly, something, something that, along those nature. lines. So uh, Aaron Irvin, who's very good to explain the situation uh, to me so we could get it out on our media platforms. We do have a story online now on the Telegram, and we'll have it in print tomorrow as well. We've had a shortened version on the radio. Uh, very, very important that... It has not been determined that Mr. Williams was murdered. It's been determined that he died, and they're trying to figure out if the assault was the uh, was the cause of his death. Okay. That is uncertain. Uh, Aaron Irvin definitely wants to say this. His quote is, we have enough evidence to file this charge of felonious assault, but we can't say at this point that this caused the death. Very important summary there. Okay. Okay. Um, so we will see what happens there. What is important outside of the arrest and what we're waiting from from the autopsy results and then what charges are filed after the autopsy results come in, if any more, is that there was an assault that took place. Uh, now, uh, family members jumped on social media, reached out to the media before law enforcement could or re report anything. Sure. And they alleged that, uh, you know, uh, their son... Uh, their uh, brother, Travis, Travis Dakota Williams, uh, was beaten and tortured. Mm -hmm. uh, they talked about uh, him, uh, an attempt to put him in a cage, maybe bury him alive. Uh, horrible. Yeah. And this is out there. People have seen this. Um, and it was, you know, just trying to separate uh, what is alleged from what really happened. Wow. And so they have enough evidence, the Vinton County Sheriff's Office, to believe that there was an incident that involved an assault. To the point that James Coleman right now is being held responsible for that assault. This is a second degree felony charge as high up as you can go for felonious assault. Okay. And that charge, you know, could uh, could uh, increase or uh, there could be a another charge or more charges coming when the autopsy results are in and investigation uh, is over. The investigation is continuing beyond just awaiting the autopsy results. They're still interviewing people. Um, <clears throat> there could be, uh, Aaron Irvin did not rule out other arrests being made in connection with this case. Uh, the social media posts from the family indicate that, you know, there were witnesses to this beating. I see. Okay. So we will see what happens. So that is the latest. And we, okay. of course, will have, uh, any update beyond what I'm saying now. We'll certainly, uh, follow up there in our, in our, on our website, the telegramnews.com, and, uh, of course, the print edition. Am I we going to check one more time there before our print deadline? Okay. Uh, Red Thompson Jr. Uh, came in on the first shift. That is a concession that he's made for us. What on earth did you do to get that boy out of bed? I, I, I don't know. He, he, can do, he can do whatever he has to, I can tell you. He <laughs> is a dedicated person. He is. And I know he's going to talk about some things in Vinton County. Nobody knows more about Vinton County news than uh, Red Thompson Jr. That's and he's right. here to uh, 
share some of the latest there. All right. So I will bamboos and let Red take my seat. Okay. Come on over, Red. Good to see you, buddy. Thank you. Good morning. And thank you for having us again, Miss Jen. Of course. Okay. We got some good news from Benton County to counter the bad news that Pete just gave us. Good, good. And uh, it's about Garrett Ridge. Oh, the water uh, issue. Yeah, the water issue. And we want to thank Keith Solomon, Deputy Manager at Jackson County Water. He gave us a great interview. We're going to have it in the upcoming edition of the Telegram. He laid out the scope of what's going on. Okay. They've got a lot of work to do. Yes. And the residents up there, they'll be glad to know that work is underway. Planning is underway. Should put it, should not work. Planning work is underway. Not construction work. Not yet. But they are going to have to um, upgrade three different water systems that they have because this project is such high pressure that their existing facilities won't, it'll blow them out. Oh. They're raising the pressure so high to get, um, I figured up the cost for this project is going to be $241,000 a customer to hook them up. Woo-wee. It's a big project and they're going to hook up 24 homes for $5.8 million. Okay. But as he explained, not only do they have to, they've got a, almost every line, they have some lines in place, but they've all got to be replaced with much bigger ones. So they are spending money to create an infrastructure that in the future will be able, be able to serve more customers at a much cheaper price. And they also have to put in a big tank that's 105 feet tall. And they want to have bedrock area to do that. And they think they found a location for the tank. Okay, good. So um, this process has been long. Um, the health department, the local schools, and Total Media all helped uh, get it attention. Uh, the Appalachian Regional Commission, John Kerry, mm -hmm. uh, at the uh, governor's office of Appalachia. It's been a team effort. It definitely takes a village, yeah. doesn't it, Red? In this in this case, yeah, when you're talking $241,000 <sighs> hook up a waterline customer, it sure does. <laughs> it sure does. But, you know, it's, it's, it's just so crazy. It's kind of like Internet as well, but water is a basic human need. And the fact that pe people don't have access to you know, municipal water or, or county water is, is crazy. It really is. And these people, they, those residents don't have any other option. They, they just can't do it well. It's just the yeah. water is just not there with the salt tables and everything else. So. But they are getting public water and great. And uh, the water company wants people to understand this is not the typical project that they do. This project has to be done a certain way. It's very high pressure, and they just can't they can't, can't cut corners. Mm -hmm. They it has to be done a certain way, or they're going to have blowouts, mm -hmm. and that this blowouts just don't help. Them. No, they, they'll be in trouble with the EPA. And <laughs> well, you've got to. I mean, if you're going to do a project of that magnitude, it needs to be done perfectly and, and properly. So, so uh, Garrett Ritz residents. Um, Help us on the way. Woohoo! Love that. And hopefully that uh, they'll get the other 28. It'll be much cheaper to get the other 28 in Garrett Ritz homes because of what they're doing in the first phase. The, yeah. the tank and the bigger lines that will be able to spread water out quicker. Uh, there is some other good news in Benton County since we're on the good news uh vibes today yeah at the high school um they are the crosswalk is nearly finished okay there it is um they've got the signs up and the lighting awesome That's, it's right near mcdonald's there at the high school and all they're waiting on is u.s route 50 to be paved um it hasn't been paved yet 
when it is, lines will be put across it. Okay. That's why there's no lines, because that's just uh, where they had to mill the road to get ready to pave it. They haven't been able to put the lines across. Sure. So that'll make uh, crossing Route 50 um, a lot easier and uh, safer. Um, you still need to look both ways before you cross, though. Look both ways and push the new button so the lights yes. will come on. Make sure, though, it's going to be a learning you know, curve for people that, that are not used to having to stop there, but... Yeah, no jaywalkers. <laughs> yeah. We don't need any jay. Like they said in Mayberry, no jaywalkers. <laughs> <laughs> and one other thing, uh, Dylan, I don't know if you have them, the pictures from the Jackson football. It's football season. Oh, my gosh. And we were at Alumni Stadium yesterday, and there's the Jackson Ironman ready to uh, practice, and, and there they are. Coach Hall's having them in four. Four fourths there running up and down the field. Yep. That's awesome. And Jennifer, we have football in two weeks. Can you believe that? Unbel oh man. Whew. Would you ever imagine three games before Labor Day? No. Three regular season games. Not at day. all. No. no way. Um, so football's in action. We are underway with our fall sports preview. We'll be out taking pictures and interviewing the coaches. And uh, Todd and Brock are out there, and I'll be doing a little bit of it. So we're going to be busy with that. And uh, golf season actually is underway. Jackson's already had a match, and oh, Benton County's having one this morning out at Franklin Valley. Cool. So, so fall sports is underway. Unbelievable. Well, Red, thank you so much for coming and telling us all you know. And sounds like uh, some good news in the in the works. So that's that's fantastic. Let's get some people water, and uh, by next fall, you know, they can have the public water that all of us enjoy. So good. And take for granted. <laughs> we do. Yeah. So we remember those that don't have it. Yes, yeah, so. absolutely. All right. Well, Red, thanks again, and uh, thank you to everyone that stopped by today. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you get out to Pig Iron Day tomorrow. It's going to be a blast right here in downtown Jackson uh, at Manpower Park. It's a beautiful venue, Wheels of Steel Car Show, all of that fun stuff going on tomorrow. So have a great day, have a great weekend, and we'll see you right back here on Monday. Bye-bye.